Maybe you've heard of compost tea. I'm going to show you today how we make aerated compost tea, which really is great to make your plants happy and to make them sing happy songs. Stay tuned. So what do we need to make this amazing compost tea? The best compost tea starts with the best compost. And this is a vermi compost made by a master composter called Frank Tutin. I, it's amazing. You have to start with great compost tea. And what's the whole idea of compost tea? It's getting as much as the microorganisms that are in here to be first extracted and then multiplied so you can spray it on your trees, on your plants, or apply it directly to the soil. So start with great compost. Then we bag it into tea bags. That's why it's called compost tea, because you're basically making a giant tea bag or you can make it in a five gallon bucket if you like. Just use, eh, for home use, that's probably the best. Just get an aquarium bubbler, get a, a mini tea bag of compost tea and do it in a five gallon bucket. We do it for the farm, so we use a bigger quantity. So we use these, these vats that we've had for a long time. You could use a cube. You can modify a cube like this, that'll work as well. But we have these, it works great. You wanna get water in the vats. Obviously that's your, it's not boiling water, it's just water. And this is the aerated compost tea method that Dr. Elaine Ingham suggests. So you want your containers nice and clean. We actually pressure wash them between rounds. Then you need some way of making your air bubbler. So we got a, it's a big bubbler to do. We could do two 1,000 liters with this. So it's an air pump. You can get them from aquaculture suppliers. Then we've plumbed in a couple of lines with our air stones, which are at the bottom of the water. So that's your, that's your base. You want water that's aerated. So there's the bubbles going on. And then once, you've got your system up and running that you've got air in water in clean vats then you add your tea bags and I don't just drop it in like you would with a tea you actually want it suspended so that it doesn't go to the bottom so the air will basically circulate under the tea bag because you do want to extract what's in here this goodness you want to get it out and a little bit of the is the fertility but most of it what you want is the life in this compost to be brought out put into the water and then multiply that's the essence of good compost tea that's the essence of good compost tea that's the essence of good compost tea what you want is the life in this compost to be brought out put into the water and then multiply tea. you could make compost extract which would be the same thing, but without the air. So now you're just dipping like you would a tea bag and that's compost extract. It's not aerated compost tea. So you would just put the bag in, let it sit not too long. And there's a discussion as to which one happens. So is it, is it better the compost tea or the compost extract? Compost tea is a bit aggressive because of the bubbles, so you may reduce some of the species you have, but the compost extract gives you more species, just not as much of them. Just an hour or two. You don't want them to encourage anaerobic. Oh, look at that tea happening. So that's basically what you'd get happening with the compost extract. So you see, I'm extracting the microorganisms that are in here into this water. No bubbles needed. And it's basically like dipping and, and that's, that's how you would make a compost extract. And I guess if you wanna sit here for half an hour and keep dipping the tea bag, you would get the most out of it. Otherwise you would just tie it and let it seep or steep out of it. And that would give you a compost extract. I would say don't leave it much more than an hour and then use it and don't want it sitting around in there for long and then you would apply it. 
So that's extract, and we'll attach these both tea bags, get it in, and get it brewing. So this one's been in here for a few minutes. You can see how the water is getting cloudier, right? It's extracting the compost tea. And this one hasn't been in here at all yet. So now we'll set up our tea bag maneuver. We'll put it in. Because we're making aerated, we will start the bubblers. So they start now. It will actively, so see now the bubbles, it's basically the same thing I was doing with dipping. The bubbles will start dipping the compost out of it. Now we're actively extracting the microorganisms from these tea bags into the water. But the next step is how you multiply the organism. So imagine you have a million bacteria in here, or mostly in here now. So you've got a million bacteria. Well, bacteria multiply at a doubling rate every 20 minutes. So if you do the math, you'll see that you could get to some fantastic numbers in no time, but you have to add some food for them. The water itself doesn't have the food. So let's go get food. So here is our, our compost tea bacteria food so this is sugarcane molasses you could get it even from home use you can buy sugarcane molasses uh, in the grocery store and the ratio works out to about one liter this is a two liter container or one liter is a quarter gallon per in this case these vats are 125 gallons so do the math as an approximation they say for a five gallon, you're using two tablespoons. So it's not a lot. I like to go on the little bit more because when it comes time to feeding bacteria, you want a lot of bacteria. So I'll use two liters per vat and watch what happens when you add this in. It's pretty magical. Listen to the sound change. So I want to put it in thin over everything you hear that it changes the viscosity you especially want to put it where there's a lot of bubbles so it mixes in properly there one and a half liters each will be right and it is molasses so it's it's yeah it's it's sticky but that's what feeds bacteria is sugar so if you want your gut to be full of bacteria which there's good and bad bacteria feed it sugar we want to extract as much microorganisms so they're extracted and then we want to multiply them applying this molasses so now these are being fed and they will multiply by doubling their population every 20 minutes so look at the difference this one now which is it's more viscous and look at that one which is just the extract so no molasses so let's see that again let's put it right here where we get a lot of bubbles so we'll put a half a liter this time watch the change I always always find this magical so that's only half a liter we'll put another No microorganisms were harmed in the making of this video. They were actually benefited. And that's how you extract it. Now we'll let it brew for about 24 hours. You don't want to go much longer than that. So we want to spray tomorrow. Spray our trees against scab. And this will be perfect timing. It'll be ready first thing in the morning. 
we'll be able to go out and spray the orchard with this. What else would you use it for? Uh, you could use it for any kind of fungal disease. And how does compost tea work on leaves? It works the same way, and go see my whey video, because we've sprayed whey in the past for a long time, but this year we just decided it was time to mix it up and use some compost tea for a while, just to add to the diversity of the microorganisms. So you gotta start and put it on, and you spray it on the same way as you would anything that is the equivalent. And how does this compost tea work? It works the same way as whey, which means it doesn't kill microorganisms. It doesn't kill the fungus. It doesn't kill the scab. It works by out-competing it. So we have a rain predicted in two days. And so the ideal is to spray trees or plants a day before the rain so that all the new leaves will be coated with microorganisms not ice cream, although it's the best ice cream around. You want them sprayed with the microorganisms and those microorganisms will, imagine you have a leaf. So on your leaf, there is sugars. And the sugars are what's called exudates. They will exude or give off sugars, which then feed microorganisms. And that microorganism could be um, scab fungus or fungal disease. So by putting compost tea or by putting whey, what happens is you end up getting a leaf covered with microorganisms that you select. So in this case, the compost tea, those bacteria will eat the sugars on here. And then when the conditions are perfect for scab spores to eject or to let go billions of little spores, those spores landing on the leaf will land in a desert. They'll land and there's no food available for them. And so they can't multiply, they can't get established. And that's really how it works. It's beautiful how we don't kill something, even though we don't want, let's say scab, we don't kill it. So we don't kill any mushrooms. We want lots of mushrooms in the orchard. And this is the way of, of doing it. So you can use compost tea, you can use whey, and whey is usually way better. <laughs> whey, and whey is usually way better. <laughs> it's way better because it's a good, it's a foliar feed at the same time as acting as a way of controlling the disease. And look at the big bubbles happening. We're starting to get actual tea brewing. It won't be ready till tomorrow. Use a simple technique of a five gallon bucket, a simple aquarium bubbler, put some excellent compost tea in it. So usually the recipe is about two cups of compost for a five gallon bucket and two tablespoons of molasses to feed it. Bubble it for 24 hours and go ahead, apply it in your garden. Try it out, see what it does. Let me know if you've tried it how it worked.